Alright everyone, welcome back to Override's Redstone Tutorial. Today we're going to go over some how to make a double door, and we're also going to try to go over phasers, which are redstone circuits that rapidly fire on and off and on and off again. Uh, as you can see, there's the old structure back there, but we're going to work over here for now. Uh, I found the easiest way to make a double door system is to, uh, well, I'm just going to get right into it and show you how to work it. Basically, you want to make it so it's using pressure plates, which is the best. So we're going to do two right here. Let me turn the fog up so it works better. All right. Now you make two little things right here, and then put things on top of it. This is where your pressure plates are going to go. These are going to go right here. Now, as you remember how pressure plates work, when you step on them, the light goes on off down here. Since these two are connected, and you remember that redstone will be activated no matter, or if, if any of the switches are above it, these will activate these below it. This will be very, very helpful, and it'll be basically how we're going to throw this all together. So what's going to happen is, we're going to make it so that if this one or that one is turned on, it's going to open up the doors that we connect to it. So it's either one of these. So what gate are we going to use? Uh, did you say AND gate? No, we're not going to use an AND gate. We're going to use an OR gate. OR gates are essentially the same concept. If you want this one or this one to turn on the doors, then you use OR gates. So what we're going to do is make it come around here. Make a nice little pattern thing we're going here. Okay. That's okay, that'll work. Alright, so we just connect these. And we make our gate. Now I'm actually working behind the, do the lock, or sorry, I'm working behind the switches because I want the door to be in front of here and there's a lot of little computational stuff that needs to go on for this. So we're going to do all the computation behind these and then the doors will be right in front of these. As a matter of fact, I just figured out a way to optimize this. There we go. And that'll make this smaller too. There. So this is our, actually I believe this is a NOR gate because when this is on, that is off. Okay, so this is a NOR gate. If you wanted to have an OR gate, it would just be that and these would be connected. But, we're, but for uh, size matters, we can actually use a NOR gate and then just invert the outcome. So we're going to make these go all the way around and these are going to connect to where our doors are going to connect. Now, if you'll notice, this is connected to here. What we're going to do is the same concept and use torches to light the doors above them. It's a little confusing at first, but you'll get it. Now, I'm not really sure which one of these is I'm going to invert because if you've tried with double doors before, it's not so easy because both doors are facing opposite directions. So one of the inputs needs to be inverted while the other one stays normal. I'll show a better demonstration once I get this working. I've also fixed my sound as well. There we go. So now, this one's going to be on, this one's going to be on. So these are going to be connected to these torches, and above these torches, we're going to put our doors. So, door number one. Make sure door number two comes down here. Yes, there's that door. If I do this right. There, see how these two, the one door has this handle on the right, the other door has it on the left. So these are opposite facing doors. This means when I turn this on, one of them's going to open, but one of them's going to stay closed. Get my dirt out. Okay, so that one is the one that we need to invert. See? So we got to just change that one. So we do our simple inverter right here. And that works. So now, as you can see, the little, the little run through. These switches activate these wires. The wires go into the NOR gate. The NOR gate powers that door and then inverts and also causes that door either open or shut. Since the signals, one of them's on and one of them's off, they activate the door depending on whether it should be open or closed. And let's test it so if we only step on the left switch, both doors open. That's good. If we only step on the right switch, <laughs> fell. Right switch, both doors open. So, doesn't matter which ones you stand on, both doors are open. Now, I'll just make this a little prettier, and here we go. And you'll see both doors open at, you know, 
and they close behind you at a good time too. So, and what's great about this is you can connect your wires if you want to make it a, a two-way opening door. So you're walking, doors open, they close behind you. It's lovely, and you get that that double door feel. You know, like you're just kicking down the doors. You just have this. That could get probably in the way, but you can fix that by just making this go down a layer and doing the same thing. It's not really necessary. But, so there's your basic outcome. And you could just repeat this on this side if you'd like to have it so that when you exit, it does the same thing. All right, so that's our basic overview for double doors. All right, uh, I did a little modification just in case you want to get a full tutorial out of this about how to make it both sides, because it got me a little confused at first and then I figured it out. Um, on this side, I only had one red or one switch because I ran out of wood, but you want this side to open both gates, or both doors, sorry, I messed up the fog here, there we go. So this one opens both of them. The way you can do this is, on the normal side, the one that's not inverted, the regular side, these two things have to come into an AND gate, which connects to that, and then on the side that you do have inverted, these just come together and go directly into that. So there's this side. If, if this was, if there was another one, it would work exactly the same. Oops. So that one opens that way. This one opens this way. Everything's great. So what we're going to talk about next is phasers. Now, a few of you have actually told me, like, hey, I'm trying to build something, but I keep getting this weird hissing noise, and nothing works. Well. One reason might be, if you have an output that's somehow being redirected back into your input, it's going to make a really, really messed up signal. And it's basically saying, okay, if this is on and it gets another on signal, it's going to turn itself off. But that off signal is going to turn this off, it's going to turn it back on, which is going to turn it back off, and it's going to just keep going and going and going and never stop. So, basically you get something like this, which... Notch actually has a thing so that if you do run into that problem, it'll actually burn itself out, so to say. See, after about a second or two, it'll just burn itself out. Or it might do it instantly. Yep. So this is something that it can go wrong when you do stuff. Or you could actually do this on purpose. And I'll show you how to make something really cool out of this. Basically, you could have it as some kind of like a warning alarm. Because there's no real, like, sounds or anything in this game except, you know, those random hissing noises. So what you could do is set up a bunch of these so they go off constantly. And they're actually kind of recharging each other, if you think about it. So I'm going to build this. This was on the Minecraft wiki a long time ago. I don't think it's on there anymore for some reason, but this is a continual pulser. Basically, each one of these is connected to the other one. Of course, it's going to lag out a lot. Do, whatever you do, don't do these on any kind of server because it's basically a giant infinite loop and computers don't like that a lot. But yeah, this should, this will just keep flashing on and off and on and off and on and off again. So what's going to happen is, say, somebody like walks onto a pressure plate and that trips a circuit that starts this or something. And then you have this hooked up to like, you know, I don't know, 40 doors or something like... So this door just starts freaking out. We got another one. And that door's freaking out. And you can do this if you just really want to like annoy people, you know, like the sounds and sounds and sounds and sounds and sounds. And then if you want to stop it, you just break one of these. Break that one too. So yeah. Actually, um I think if you break one of these, that one stops, break that one. Stops. Okay. I'm trying to think, you could probably hook this up to a switch somehow and get it so. Let's see, that's connected to that, that's connected to that. And we get. We don't have any switches. And we don't have any wood. I'm almost certain if there was a switch here, it would work. Uh, you could try it at home, you know, if you want to try to prove me wrong. Uh, <laughs> put a switch here or something and see if that'll open or close the door. Because that, when that turns on, these things freak out. My game lags, and it works pretty well. So there's your little alarm flashy phaser thingy of death, and if you don't want this to happen, just try to avoid this. This will help, I guess. Alright, so tune in next time, so we, I might go over the memory lock door. Basically how to convert this into something that will actually 
uh, save your input once you enter it in. So keep in tune for that. That'll be great. Catch you later.